Getting your one-time entry visa is only the first part of applying for temporary residency in Mexico. After this video, you'll know what you need to finalize the process and get your temporary residency card once you're in Mexico. For the best advice about moving to Mexico, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload a new episode every Thursday. Hi, I'm Alex, and I'm an American expat living in Querétaro, Mexico. I started the process of applying for temporary residency in July 2020. Now, unless you're married to a Mexican citizen or have other close family ties to Mexico, you have to begin the process of applying for temporary residency at a Mexican consulate outside of Mexico. You can check out this video for part one of the process, which details my entire experience applying for temporary residency at the Mexican consulate in Detroit. Before we dive into the good stuff and I tell you exactly what you need to finalize your temporary residency permit in Mexico, I want to make it clear that I am not an immigration lawyer. This video and the information in it is based on my own experiences. Now, the very first thing that you are going to want to do as soon as you're settled in, I mean, pretty much the day after you get to Mexico, because remember, you only have 30 days. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is fill out the form for your tramite. Now, this isn't an appointment per se. You can't make appointments for immigration but it does state your purpose of why you want to go into the INM building, what you need there, and basically just registers you in the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through these different documents, these different parts of the process, and I will link in the description everything that I am showing you here. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is fill out this formato para solicitar trámite migratorio de estancia. It will take you to another web page and it's asking you what do you desire to do? You are exchanging your migratory document. You are exchanging your FMM, that migratory form that you filled out on the airplane and had the 30 days written on it by the immigration official, for your residency card. Now, down here, you don't need to fill out anything that doesn't have an asterisk next to it. So for names, you want to fill out your first and your middle name. So if you have a middle name in your passport on your official documents, put your middle name under nombres. Apellido, that's your last name. So just if you have one last name, put that there. If you have two, do that. The rest of these are pretty straightforward. Now, this part here where it says domicilio, it's asking for your address in Mexico. And if you don't have an apartment yet, just know that you will have to do an address change at INM at a later date. If you need help or are kind of worried about finding an apartment in Mexico, head to the description and download the totally free Move to Mexico Quick Start Guide. It has apartment hunting tips, a renting in Spanish cheat sheet. This guide that I put together will be a total lifesaver for helping you find a place to live in Mexico. After you've filled out your address, you're going to scroll down and fill out your email address. From there, you will select Guardar and it will give you your tramite. You'll have a PDF to save or to print out and you're going to want to make sure you do that because you need to sign your copy and present it at INM. I'm going to go right down this list of necessary documents explaining what each one is and also highlighting the discrepancies because while this list seems very complete, very convenient, there are a few differences between what this list says and what you actually need to bring to immigration. You'll need to bring your passport as well as a color copy of that front page with your signature. Next, you'll need to bring your visa, which is just in your passport, as well as a color copy of that. 
and you'll also need to bring your FMM. Now this is a copy of mine because I had to hand in the original. You'll need to bring the original a copy and I suggest making another copy for your records since it is something that you are handing over. Next, we have this formato basico and you have to fill it out completely. Now there's a link on this page here and it will take you to a PDF. Now, this application is pretty straightforward and if you speak Spanish, if you have an intermediate level of Spanish, honestly, even if you have access to Google Translate, this is pretty easy to fill out. There were just a few things that I wanted to highlight on this formato basico that kind of threw me for a loop. Now down here, this section that says Actividad in su país de residencia, this part of the form is asking you to detail what you did for work, what you did to earn money in your home country. The Actividad in Mexico is a bit of a trick question. Now remember, a temporary residency permit is not a work permit. So while it is okay to work online to earn money from clients in your home country or other parts of the world, you are not supposed to be working in Mexico. So your principal activity should not reflect work whatsoever. If you put down here anything about working online, it could potentially confuse the immigration official and create a longer process for you. So this is what I ended up doing. After talking to a few different people, I decided in the section that says actividad principal to put hogar, and that just means being at home. I also wrote aprender español, and just stating that I was in Mexico to learn Spanish, experience the culture, and that's the same type of thing that I told the immigration official at INM when she asked me why I was applying for temporary residency. That's it for the formato básico. Now let's move on to the pago de derechos. Now, the link for this is not found under the necessary documents, but I will go ahead and put the link in the description of this video. So what is the pago de derechos? Well, you have to pay for your temporary residency permit before you even go to INM. You will need to do it at a bank, but first, before you go to the bank, in order for the bank to know what to do once you're there, you have to fill out this little form online and print it out. So first things first, it's asking the type of person you are. You are física because you are one person. Moral would be if you were doing this for a group of people. So you're going to fill out your last name, your first and your middle name over here, and that is it. So I will go ahead and do that now just to show you what it looks like. Now on this next page, it's asking you the type of tramite that you have. And remember, it's you're paying for your temporary resident permit. So derecho de residente temporal. And down here, you're going to select for one year. You usually can't do more than a year at a time for your temporary residency visa. Down here, you'll select the state where you're going. I went in, oops, can't find it, Querétaro. And over here, the city. Select continue. On this next page, you can see that it's given me a reference number as well as the amount, how much you'll need to pay for your temporary residency visa. It costs 4,271 pesos. You can print and it'll give you this sheet here, which you will then take to the bank. I went to Santander. I went to Santander in Querétaro and paid for my visa in cash. The bank employee typed all of this information here in and then printed out a receipt. I signed the receipt affirming that all the information on it was correct. And then you need to make sure that with that receipt from the bank, you make two copies of it. 
So you will bring the original plus two copies to INM. Make sure you have those two copies because the immigration official does use them at INM and will turn you away if you don't have them. The last thing that you will need to prepare in advance and bring to INM are these three photographs tipo infantil. Now these are very specific photographs that INM, that immigration, wants. And they want two photos of the front of your face and one photo of your right side profile. Now you need to follow certain requirements for these photos. It needs to be a white background. You must have your forehead completely exposed, have no earrings and no glasses. Your hair needs to be tucked behind your ears. And of course, the photos need to be in color. Now, about two weeks after I got back to Mexico, I had all my documents ready, all of those copies, and I went to INM on a Thursday. So I arrived to the immigration office a little after 6 a.m. I know what you're thinking, that is very, very early. And you're right, the immigration office doesn't open until 9 a.m., but lining up outside just seems like the thing to do. And I had heard that because of COVID, the immigration office was only letting in 50 people per day. So I wanted to make sure, since I was making the trip out there, that I was going to be able to get in. Got our chairs, a little cooler, we downloaded some shows, and a movie. Um, when I got here, we were like 11th in line, um, but people have been holding places, lawyers have been holding places, so it's changed a little bit, but not too much. I think I'm definitely going to get in today. When the immigration official at the front gate looked at my tramite and saw my reason for wanting to go into the INM building, saw that I was there for my temporary residency, she gave me a green ticket. And when I went inside, I was only sitting down for maybe a minute in the waiting area before all the green tickets were called upstairs. There we were asked to take a number and when our number was called, we would meet with an immigration official. Everything was happening very quickly and I was probably sitting down for less than a minute before my number was called. I went up to a table and sat across from an immigration official. There was a partition between us. I'm not sure if that's always there or if that was just for COVID. And she asked why I was there and I slid all of my documents under the partition. She started to go through them and really the only question she asked me the entire time was why I wanted to live in Mexico. I explained that my grandparents had both been from Mexico and that I wanted to live here, learn Spanish and travel, get to know the culture. She seemed satisfied with that answer and we didn't really speak again until she was asking me to sign a form agreeing that all the information that I had submitted was true and accurate and that I was going to be receiving confirmation via email about updates to my immigration status. How long does it take to get your temporary residency permit? Well, I have heard from some people that it can take as little as two weeks to as long as two months. My friend Riley, who helped me so much with this process, told me that it took her two months to get her temporary residency permit from INM here in Querétaro. So that is kind of what I'm thinking will happen. What do you do if you need to leave Mexico while your temporary residency permit is pending? Well, if you have to leave Mexico, you need to apply for an exit permit. And this is actually, I have heard, more complicated than the residency process itself. So if you can avoid applying for an exit permit, I highly recommend doing that. So my advice to you would be to plan this process around a time that you will be able to be in Mexico for at least two months while you wait to get your card back. 
When I do receive an update from INM, whether that be an email or a notification on the website with my NUT number, I will go back to INM, wait in line again, get fingerprinted, and then in that visit, receive my temporary residency card. Even though I don't have my temporary residency card officially yet, I wanted to create a video updating you about this process because I know some of you are doing it simultaneously and I wanted to make sure that you had this information. When I have my temporary residency card in my hot little hand, I will be sure to make a third video in this temporary residency in Mexico series so you can know what that last visit to INM was like and I will reflect on this entire process in that video. If you have any questions about applying for temporary residency in Mexico or just moving to Mexico in general, be sure to leave those in the comments and I will definitely answer them. I'm Alex from BackpackingBrunette.com. Thanks for watching. Watch these videos next for even more advice about moving to Mexico. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with someone who dreams of moving to Mexico.